Hey guys, it's Zaparoli here again. And today we have some new content here on the stream, guys. So earlier today I thought, well, maybe I could do some React content, you know. So and I thought about what kind of content hey I guys. would want to create, you know. So turns out that today is the day that your friend here, Jen Hendrick, every every Monday uh, he makes a Notion file compiling like all the the news and the new content that uh, involves the Click universe, you know. So it's very interesting, and uh, I'm gonna show you guys now. And for me, this is also a a great study opportunity as well, you know. So here we have the Notion file, but before I'm gonna show you guys here Jen Hendrick's profile. I'm gonna share his his profile here too, so you guys can follow him. Okay. And he posted here today the latest click related news and learning resources. Guys. This content is pure gold if you want to learn more about ClickSense and keep up with the news, you know. So, let's start. Okay, let's go. And I have it right here already opened. And let's go. But before that, if you guys want to wanna check the, the previous resources like you guys have so many so much content here you know it's 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 kind of crazy if you get a a post here from last year you're gonna see that you have so much so much videos you know uh other knowledge nuggets it's it's really cool you know this you can really keep track of uh, of everything here you know so let's go for the knowledge nuggets of today i i did not check them yet i just saw uh, barely the 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 titles so let's see so here we have the fit feature content you know so design let's start copy and paste style let's see what this is about oh it's a post from a click employee let's see Hmm. There have been a, f a new click features for the past few months that I was excited to see. One of my favorites, which I'm sure that you are aware of, is the layout container. Yes, the layout container is great. If not have heard about it, check out Michael's blog post here. Oh, okay. Let's see. Hmm. This is from last year. Uh... The layout container wasn't released until November of last year, I think, on, on ClickSAS. Uh, I, I do not remember this video. That's very interesting. I'm gonna take a look later. Alright. Another favorite of mine is the copy and paste style feature, which allows developers to copy and paste styles from one visualization to another. With all the styling options available on visualizations, being able to copy and paste styles save time and limit the need to go into the styling properties of each visualization. Yes, yes, this is very interesting. I did not know you could do that. You know, let's see if it, if this it was implemented on this version or not. Because uh, I mean, you have to to copy and paste other charts. You know, it was kind of it took so much time. And let's see what else. Mm. Oh, and the grid, funnel, and sunken charts are able to customize the title, subtitle, footnotes, and the background of a charts. Yes, I think you could do that on the last version already. The filter pane, we, we already talked about it, that you can do so much stuff with it, with it now. Let's take here the filter pane. Let's take this app that I have created before. Filter pane, let's see. If we have the updates here already. 
I mean, the filter pane was always like a, a simple like this, you know, but now you can do so much stuff, you know, uh, before using for some circumstance, I, I used some, some extension for filters. I don't remember the name. Filter extension click like you could you, you had so many options for it, you know. I don't know what was the name of it. Let's see if I have here filter. Uh, sadly, I don't have so many so many extensions here. But anyway, like I'm really glad that clicks doing it now. You can you can set a background image. Jesus Christ. On a filter pane, I'm I'm not sure that is a great idea. But I mean the option is here, like you have to be creative of it, you know. Well you can play this so oh we have some we can set the colors of the select the alternative and exclude the values. This is really great because for you for you to do that before you need to use some CSS, you know, you had to link the class, it was, Jesus Christ, it was so much work, but now that you, you can do this, I mean, to be honest, I never had to do this before, but I have heard some cases where the client wants, wanted to change the, like, the default green color of the filter, like, I mean, if the client wants and he's paying us, I'm not gonna say no, right? I mean, he can have any color that he wants, okay? Hey Adilio, how are you doing? Hey my friend Rodolfo, how are you guys doing on this night? It's really hot here, but uh, here we are, you know. And let's, let's keep going here. And... Uh, Oh, copy style, it's right here. I don't think this is available on on ClickSense desktop yet. Let's see. Yeah, I, I don't see the the cop the copy the copy styles here. Maybe it's available on ClickSass. I have the ClickSense SAS here of a friend. Let's see if I can mm, I don't remember. Click SAS. Uh, I'm gonna take a look at it later. I love green colors. Me too, man. Like the 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 click green is is perfect. I would not change it, you know. But uh, this is very interesting. Uh, what click is doing here, like copying and pasting styles, is something that uh, that saves time. Because uh, when I'm creating stuff, I always like uh, let me get some chart here. Like, for example, maybe I want to, to copy the styles of this, this bar chart here. I would copy the whole object, I would paste here, and I would need to change the dimensions and the, and the measures for the, the ones that I wanted. Okay, so, I mean, this saves times. This saves times for us, so it's very interesting. So, that's nice. Well, we learned something new today. To be honest, I did not know that before. Interesting. I'm gonna copy and paste here. All right. And let's check the next one. Um, partners new and updates. Let's see this. Mm, uh, I don't think that I can access this. Okay, no problem. I'm not a partner yet, yet, maybe I will be someday. Uh, we have here, movie, movie sense apps between click sense on premise environments by our friend Christopher Schwartz. Man, this guy creates some crazy stuff on click, you know, and my favorite creation of uh, Christopher is the, is an extension, the quick table viewer. Let's see, quick table viewer. Guys, this this is extension is pure gold, you know. This is amazing because uh, you can get all the fields uh, of a table direct into your ClickSense app. 
that means if you want to maybe you uh, you did a select on a table and you, you want to check data and what place better to check data than click i'm right i mean i'm not a really huge fan of excel I, I i i would rather check my data on click you know and sometimes you have a table of uh, 50 plus columns you know so i'm not gonna create a table object here and paste them one by one you know it's too time consuming you do this you know so with this extension you can actually uh, get all the all the fields of a table you know so this is insane guys so i'm gonna again i'm gonna paste this here and like this for me is the best extension click uh, not click uh, a person has done and also thanks a lot my friend christopher and let's see what he has for us today move click sense apps between click on-premise environments. Hmm, that's interesting. You can read KVD into a Python with KVD library. Hmm, I never done this before, Adilio. Uh, ha have you ever done this? And uh, what was the purpose of this, my friend? I'm curious now, because I know that there are some libraries that can do that. But uh, what did you use this for? I'm curious. Um, oh, it's an article on LinkedIn. Let's let's check here. Let me take a, a sip of water. By the way, guys, this this water tastes better because it, it is on this this mug right here. It's crazy. Okay, let's see what we have here. Um. For quite some time, all my focus was on moving my great ClickSense apps from ClickSense on-premise to ClickSaaS while keeping all the content. Yes, this is really challenging because, uh, I mean, you have to change some stuff, you know, oh, especially on the, the, library, the library part, you know, on, on your files and stuff like that, like here. It's not the same on on click SaaS, you know. It's quite different, actually. So I'm I'm curious about what this is about. So let's check here what was the case. Last week, I had the case of one customer who wants to migrate click sense apps from one on-premise environment to another with the same precondition: pre keep all the private bookmarks and common sheets intact. So, it's one, uh, one on-premise environment to another. Okay, it's not on click SaaS. But it has to keep all the bookmarks and the community sheets. Man, I don't know how, how, how you can do that, you know, because... Uh, I mean, the private bookmarks, I, I think I, I have already lost my bookmarks in one client, you know. Because you had to change the app or some stuff like that. And uh, I don't think that you, you can just, like, uh, uh, export the app from one environment to another, you know. Uh, interesting. Um, coming back to Adilio here. For check values or another analysis if your server have not, have not some viewer. Mm, that's cool, man. Maybe you can export this on another, another application, right? This is, re this is really interesting. I mean, you can do so much custom stuff with Python, you know, man, so... This is a good opportunity, you know? That's nice. I would like to, to see this, you know? Well, let's come back here. The most obvious, obvious way to not keep those private and comment objects. The most obvious way will not keep those private and comment objects, of course. Unfortunately, there is no setting on the key MC when you export an app to keep that contact. Although the app endpoint of the KRS app API has a parameter for it. Man, if you guys don't know this API yet, KRS API click. It's the ClickSense repository service API. We have talked about this on, on last stream, 
uh, when there was a question of it, you know. Let's see if I can find it. Click Community Questions. And uh, uh, where where it was like? Uh, where I can see my answers here? I don't know. Uh, okay, here, here. Uh, she wanted to create some some custom scheduled triggers for click sense on the KMC. And the only way you can do this is using the KRS API. And to be honest, guys, this API here is... I don't really see so much content about this, you know. KRS API. Let's check on YouTube videos. I mean, there's one video from of six years before, you know, so... Oh, and we have some of our friend here, Christoph, that is making a video about it. I did not saw this. But with this API, guys, you can do so much stuff on, on QMC. You can do so much custom stuff that is really valuable. So let's see what he did, he, what he did here. I'm not really going to go into all the, the detail of that, but it's important for us to, to understand that this exists, you know. Uh, so, we have an export scope parameter. We'll turn all private and common content, be it sheets, stories, or bookmarks, into basic content into the exported app. Which means they will be part of the public base app. Once you import the app on your destination server, and no more separated as below. Oh, Jesus. This like this seemed really simple because he, he was making a rec uh, our request here, and just passed one parameter. You know, I mean, I'm not a, like a, a developer, but I have some knowledge on development. This for me seemed quite easy to do. On like, could you put a flag on on KMC? You know, with this option, like, I don't know. You you guys tell me. You know, but anyway, and um, no, there is also help for this by taking an inventory of the private and comment content and after upload of the app, fix such objects by unapproving or unpublishing their status. Well, because with this option here, you're going to have some some sheets that the user has created, you know, so you can approve it or not on the app. Okay. In contracts to, to, to click SAS, there are respective REST API calls. See my PowerShell example in the KRS API available for doing this job. I'm curious about this. And uh, in click size, resetting to original community or private state, and then come down by a mix of this endpoint and click CLI. Oh man. What is this about? Uh, to be honest, I I haven't messed up with uh, with the click API. I I have a really respect for the guys who does this, you know, because it, you can do so much cool stuff that uh, normally it's not possible on click. You know, you you really need to have some advanced knowledge and devour this API page and have some creativity to do those stuff, you know. So our friend Christopher here, it's going above and beyond. A basic way to do this batch job of exporting and importing up of ClickSense apps is my PowerShell solution. Mm. So he created it four days ago. It was an update. Oh, this is very interesting, guys. Copy a click sense app from one Windows server to another without the private and comment content kept. So we don't have to do this, you know. We can just use it's an extension, it's a PowerShell, it's a PowerShell script, I think. Yes, it's a PowerShell script. So I'm gonna paste to you guys right here. 
because it, this is really interesting, guys. If you if you have this demand that you want to to exchange apps from one click send server to another while keeping everything, you know. So this is a good opportunity for you guys. I'm not going to read off this, you know, but you guys can take a look. And, wow, this is amazing, man. I'm going to give you here a celebration. celebration, And leave a comment here. Thanks for sharing this. This is amazing. Good work, my friend. And here is the the LinkedIn post. Wow. Really impressive, guys. I'm really, really impressed by this. But let's see what else we have here. Again, by Christopher Schwarz. Oh, it's the same. Uh, it's the GitHub of this, what we just have done. But I mean, we have some other cool stuff here, you know. I don't know what, what this is about, but I checked here VS Code Click Extension. I'm already interested on in this, you know, because for you to use Click on VS Code, you have to set up some stuff, you know, some extensions, and this seems to be a, a really simple format, you know. Hmm. I'm going to save this for me to take a look. Interesting. And... We have also the click dark cast. The click dark cast is really interesting, guys. If you want to know more about click, so I'm going to share the his channel right here, the click dark, so you guys can see. Uh, it really has some some cool stuff no, uh, not only about click, you know, but about data in general. And you can you ha you have some really advanced stuff of clicking here. Like the git, uh, I, I saw this episode, it's git o'clock, I don't know what how the pronunciation, but it's a really nice solution, uh, this episode is very interesting, if you guys want to see, and guys, you have to check this, it's, the content here is great, you know, and it's like, it's cool to have someone making, making a podcast about click sense, you know, uh, I don't think uh, we have uh, others like this, you know. I mean, ClickSense content creator in general is very scarce, you know. A very few, a very few people do it, you know. So it's it's really nice to see this, you know. And we have here of your friend Pablo Lab, my colleague here from Brazil. We have this, the, the news of ClickSense since version 1.0. Oh my god, guys. This is, uh, let me download this, you know. I'm gonna download this. And let's see. I mean, I'm not, I'm not gonna read off the, all of this because uh, I would uh, spend uh, all, 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 my, all my night here. And we don't want that. But let's see on this was what year was this? Uh, maybe 2016 or 17, you know. Let's see. Creating apps and visualizations. How oh, the KPI, uh, KPI and pivot tables objects were being implemented, you know. Well, this was really a long time ago, guys. And I started working with ClickSense. It was on 2019 or something. Not ClickSense, it was ClickView. I went to ClickSense on 2020, you know. It was some time ago. Maybe it was on the version of November. I don't really remem remember. So we have come a long, a long time since then, guys. So it's it's kind of nice to have this this uh, document compiled here, but I really want to to take a look of um, at the news of the last version of ClickSense, you know. So let's be more detailed on this. 
So, the ClickSense February 2024 came with so many cool updates, you know. And I think this is on ClickSense Enterprise, guys, first. And the window function was added on the ClickSense Enterprise. Uh, if you don't know about the window function, I have a video on my channel that talks about it, you know. What a coincidence. Where is it? Where is it? Here. It's like basically you you doing the, the aggregate function, but on the script, you know. So this was only available on ClickSAS before, and now it's available on ClickSense Enterprise. Uh, actually, I have some cases that I wanna I wanna use this, you know. And I'm gonna take a look at it later, you know, because on my client, we only have the ClickSense Enterprise, uh, we don't have the ClickSaaS. So, and we have some crazy metrics there, you know, it was, it's so much data. So being able to use the window function on the script, it's a game changer already, guys. This function is very powerful and should be used. We have also so many new updates on the pivot table. Okay, let's grab the pivot table here. And appearance, let's see what we have here. Dimension headers, we can set new value custom symbols, foreground and background color. Uh, I have a new here, let's see if I can change it. No, 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 where is it? Uh, I don't really see the no values here. Hey, teacher Thaisa, you are the best. By the way, we have to reschedule our classes for, for this week, you know, since I'm going to travel to to Florianopolis on, on, on Friday, you know. And... Uh, where is the, the new part? I don't really see. Maybe it's not available on ClickSense Desktop. I have the latest version here, but uh, I don't really see it, you know. It's not a problem. I mean, it says ClickSense Enterprise here, and I'm on ClickSense Desktop, okay. But for you to, to change the new values before on, on a pivot table, you need to use some custom CSS. Uh, CSS click a uh, pivot table. So you have so much content here that you can change the header, uh, the colors, the background, and stuff like this. You know, you need to use some CSS for that. And now you barely need to use this. You know, so this is very interesting. Oh, thank you, teacher. So we have also grid styling. Font style for size, color, and family for headers. I think we have this. Title, subtitle, footnotes, background color. You can change this, you know, we can make some crazy stuff. Uh, total stylings above or below. Ah, we don't, we did not have total styles above. I think it was just below before. This is very interesting. Columns with each option set to auto pixels or percentages. Mm, okay, you can uh, change the width here of the columns. Let me remove this. This blue, Jesus Christ. Okay. What else we have here? And we have our champion layout container, guys. Oh my god. This is. Probably the best object that Click has released since ClickSense. You had the, you had this on Click View before. It was native. It was like a, the the behavior of Click View. Sorry. And now you have the layout container. The layout container. If you don't know about the layout container yet, I don't know if you if you did not heard about the layout container because so many people have been talking about it. It's an extension that permits you to. You guys are gonna see. 
let me get a master item here and another master item with a map maybe you can do a filter here you know so you can really create so much stuff like customize the here it's really interesting you know guys you can put this here if you want you know we can do everything with this you know so we i showed you on the last live thing cine's channel thing cine thing cine created some crazy stuff with the layout container here on the his street fighter application so you guys can check this and the layout container is great guys so this is a big update that is now on click sensing enterprise that was on click sas since november of 2023 we have some new styling for charts filter pane styling we have even more options on the filter pane styling because i remember on the last version that we already had some some new changes we have some, some border and shadows, the cop and paste styles that we, we talked about this. That's basically you, you, you copy the styles of a chart and paste it into another. Okay. And that's it. You know, this is very interesting. I really like this version of ClickSense Enterprise. And it's quite fast, you know, uh, because on the last version we have the we have this on sas and we we already have this on the click sense enterprise on the next version so very cool for click to be doing this 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 position of like keeping the click sense enterprise updated because i mean most of the clients that i have worked with use the click sense enterprise so you can't really toss it around I don't know if you guys agree with me, you know, it's uh, like SaaS is the future, but we have so many ClickSense enterprises. And guys, uh, for some companies, this is not going to change, especially if you work with the government or some companies that don't really trust or have some, uh, some security uh, reasons, you know, they prefer to keep, keep your data in your house. But it's a discussion for another day, you know. So I'm really glad that Click is doing this, you know. All right. Let's see what else we have here. Mm. The synergy of business and IT will be the key to harnessing Africa's full potential. What is this about? I don't know, guys. You tell me. Uh, I don't really think it's a click-related news, but it's it's knowledge. And um, okay. Oh, Insight Consulting is a company that works with Click. You know, so this is related to Click. And I think our friend here, Jim Hendrick, is from Insight Consulting as well. So that's, let's see what this is about. The African continent is poised for economic growth, rapid urbanization, and increased incomes with its population expected to reach about 1.7 billion people by 2030. My God, it's a lot of people. How many people the African continent has now? How many people are in the African continent? Uh, 1.2 billion. So, oh my God. So it's going to increase to 1.7 billion. My God, it's a lot of people, guys. And um, let's see the IT department. Uh, let's see what it's about. Um, Well, the investments on the data, on big data, data catalog, data governments, integration, data lakes, and uh... oh yes, this, this happens a lot, guys. When the data measurement mismatches what the business users actually wants, 
So this creating some data silos. If you if you don't know if you guys don't know about uh, data silos, uh, you should research about it. But uh, as far as I remember, data silos is when you have uh, uh, multiple information, like the same information on multiple departments. You know, maybe you have a sales metric on the commercial and the sales department, and they and they don't speak the same language. Uh, I not re I don't really remember. I saw a, a video of my friend Rodolfo Barbosa from that squad on his private community that talks about it, you know. By the way, Rodolfo's channel is really interesting. That squad. Let's take here. He he's one of the guys who motivated me to to create content, you know. So check Rodolfo's channel here. Like uh, I I read I read data styles here and I remembered his class. So let's see what's what else we have here. Uh, one one had is interesting. One way to get this right is by having a data team that brings together business analysts that that they they are the guys of business. Supported by data scientists, developers, and I would add here uh, us too, like business analysts of like uh, of Click, for example, to support those guys because the business analysts of the business field, uh, most of the time they will not have the the knowledge that the, the tool can do. You know, maybe they want some some stuff, but they know don't know if it's possible. So it's kind of that your job to to fix this, you know. The continent of Africa is blessed with a natural abundance of talent and potential. And having data strategies that are driven by a combination of business and IT, with the waiting efforts allocated differently at various stages of the process, will be the key to unleashing this potential. Wow, this is very interesting. And... Uh, nice article. I'm gonna leave the link for you guys here too. So you guys can read. Okay. And finally, we have Brian Bowden. Man, this guy created some, some cool stuff too. You guys need to know this guy. Quick, cli uh, quick click, sorry. Quietly adds PDF output support. Hmm. I don't know about this. I mean, look at this face. Oh, you guys cannot love this guy. I mean... <laughs> uh... Dissatisfy oh click has added the PDF output spot for tabular reporting. Dissatisfy another significant use case that was unresolved in SaaS compared to on-premise any printing. Oh that's really nice guys. Um I had the case of some clients that did not want to move to click sans SaaS uh, because you did not have any printing. You could not generate a report on click SaaS. That was right, but now uh, you had some uh, some alternatives for it, uh, as far as I remember. But uh, on tabular reporting, you can extract an, an PDF file. That's very interesting. Really great addition. Addition. How do you expel addition? It's not addiction, it's a really great feature. Oh Jesus. Where was where was I? Really great feature. Oh, okay. Well, when I have access to my click SAS, I'm I can create a video about it, you know, to to make a, a text, uh, some like uh, some quick video showing you guys this feature, you know. Well, and finally, we have some some videos here. I'm not gonna look at them now, but let's see what they are about. Let me close some tabs here because uh, I don't know about you guys, but I can't work with so many tabs. 
the dark cast we already saw. Uh, we have a video of click here. Oh, copyright, god damn it. Mm, this is a video about using the tabular reporting, I think. Uh, I'm gonna take a look at this later. We have a Q&A with click, click, click replicate, replicate and best practice. And to be honest, I, I haven't used click, click replicate yet, but maybe it's a good, a good point to start, you know? So this is interesting. Uh, some shorts of click of the new improved search on click cloud. Since it's a short video, let's watch. Shows results based on recent searches and uses natural language capabilities to make suggestions. You can further filter on object type and location to find what you are looking for faster. Explore object properties and actions or access to objects directly. All right. Interesting. Click connect. Let's see this. Conferences and events that we've had in the past. Uh, the click on it's going to be amazing, guys, but I, I don't think I'm going to be able to go because it's quite expensive to have a flight from... Uh, international flights are quite expensive, you know, so flying all the way from Brazil to there, it's going to be quite some, some cash, you know, but maybe next year I can go. I would like to, I would love to go to a click connect. Well, guys, maybe the guys of Click could uh, could you help me? I don't know. I'm joking, or not? Uh, I mean, the last event I went on on Click, it was the Click World here in São Paulo, man. Man, and it was so cool, you know. It was so so amazing. I met so many new people there, and uh, I finally met some guys that I knew only from the internet, on in person. So it's gonna be amazing. And by the way, guys, uh, this Friday, I'm gonna be going to the Data World Experience. The Data World Experience, it's gonna happen in Florianópolis here in Brazil. So it's gonna be a, a really nice event. I think I'm gonna do a, a coverage of it, you know, I don't know already. But it's gonna be really interesting, and if any of you guys are gonna be there, let's meet and take a photo, you know. And of Tocato Group, Tocato Group is is really strong. It's a really strong reseller here in Brazil, of Click. So, oh, this is a video talking about data visualization. It's okay to use these multi curvy lines in line charts. I don't know. You guys tell me. Look like this. It's kind of smooth or kind of curvy line. Let's see. My name is Nick Deborah. I'm an independent educator and author in the fields of data visualization, dashboard design. And in this short video, I'm going to ask the question, is this okay? Is this a bad idea or is it, uh, is it something that you can maybe do in your own charts? The main concern that people who kind of object to curvy line charts like this is what I call the overshooting problem. So for example, in this chart, it looks like around the fall, we actually went above 100% of our transactions being successfully yes. completed. That's not even theoretically possible. And yet the curve makes the line actually go above the, that theoretical maximum. Mm, or in, that's true. Uh, in the spring, it looks like we actually hit about 60%, but we never actually got there. You can see from the point markers on the line, that we were always above 60%. Well, this is really interesting. I never thought about it, you know, so maybe using curved lines can give you uh, can give you some wrong information, you know? And so that's kind of, like I said, that's, that's the objection that people have. There are a few other actually concerns that I've heard raised as well, which are things like, People worry that the curves make it look like there are intermediate values in between the values in the chart when, in fact, there aren't any. 
or that maybe it makes the data look like it came from some kind of continuous process, like the temperature of a lake or something like that, even if it didn't actually come from uh, that kind of source. Okay. Uh, those aren't as big uh, concerns for me, though. I don't worry as much that people will, uh, will interpret the data that way. But there are no real studies that I'm aware of anyways that kind of prove things one way or the other. Another concern with uh, smooth lines is that the chart creator has to choose the degree of smoothing, right? To mm -hmm. make the segments in between the points more curvy or... Uh, he's talking about like the how much curvy that you want your lines. Uh, let's see here if I have a line chart I have. What, let's see on click, guys, what you, we can do here on the line. So it's a line. But can we set to curvy lines here? I think we can. Mm. This is the grid. And uh, vertical horizontal. I think we can do this right here. Value label. Okay, line type. Solid and dashed. Okay. Linear. Okay, this is a kind of a curved line. Let's go solid. Line thickness. Mm. Good point of view. Yeah, man, I never, I never thought about it, you know. And if you, well, this case here is like its price in, in Brazil reais, you know. So. Let's see if it applies in our case. Mm. Let me take this dimension here. And put this on narrow. Not, not this one. Uh, Where is my dimension from the left here? Uh, oh, here. One eight. Uh, can put three here. Two. Okay, here. That's that's better. Uh, so I don't think this happens in our case, like the the value going going below, like six percent right here. Because like here it's a it's a smooth line, like it's not really curvy, you know. Yeah, in this case, this is a smooth line. It's not a curvy line, like this example. But I, I get his or point. More straight. And that's kind of a subjective decision, and it can actually change the way that people interpret the data. More the options, the paradox of choice. <laughs> so, yeah, man. Question, right? You have Why so many would options. Why decide to make a chart like this with these sort of smooth lines? Well, as far as I can tell, it's mostly for kind of aesthetic or cosmetic reasons. People yes. think it kind of looks nicer. Yeah, it and, looks I mean, nicer. I guess you could sort of debate that, but that seems to be kind of the main reason. So what about you? Should you use curvy lines like this? No. Well, I think it kind of depends on the circumstances a little bit. For example, if you're creating a chart like this, which is really for entertainment purposes, or maybe if you're Number of kind of people killed by venomous like spiders, that, Jesus. Really high precision is not a super high priority, then yeah, it's probably fine. And by the way, this is a very funny chart from a very funny site called Spurious Correlations. I'll put a link in the, uh, uh, in the description below. You can check it by out. By the way, guys, correlation is not a ca uh, causation. I don't remember the word correctly. Uh, cause and correlation. It's a very interesting topic. Uh, where, where was what I here? There's many other examples. If, however, your chart is going to be used for kind of more work-related or maybe technical, uh, you know, in, te in technical situations, 
then you know I'd probably stay away from them because as far as I can tell, there's no real benefit to them apart from perhaps uh, you know a cosmetic one. And there are some potential downsides, although I don't think the downsides are huge. Personally, I, uh, I tend to stay away from them. And really... By the way, guys, how much time did you lose in a, in a project like uh, just making things pretty on your dashboard, you know? Because I have lost quite some time. You know, anyway. are, are these sort of smooth lines actually a lot more attractive? <laughs> Even that is, is potentially subjective. Now, there are situations where I think smooth lines are perfectly fine. And in fact, you know, even recommended, mm. right? uh, like a situation like this, for example, where, uh. where the, the line doesn't directly connect the points in a chart. And so you'll see this with things like trend lines or uh, moving averages, things like that. And so the line actually doesn't connect to the points directly. In that case, smooth lines I yeah, think are absolutely fine. This is okay. Fine. I agree. And a second situation where I think smooth lines are fine is in what's called a bumps chart. And so this is kind of a special kind of line chart that shows changes in rank as opposed to changes in quantity. And for various reasons, smooth lines are... <laughs> what the fuck is this? <laughs> oh my god. What the hell is this chart, guys? Daily rank of medals earned. Wow. This looks like a, a puzzle for me. <laughs> oh my God. Really fine in a situation like this. When I published a blog post about this originally, there were people who commented that there are different smoothing algorithms out there, and that's absolutely true. Uh, these lines are uh, using a smoothing algorithm called a monotone smoothing algorithm. Subway parameters. <laughs> and while this algorithm does kind of eliminate the overshooting problem, it's also not maybe as I, pleasing as some fuck, of the that was funny. algorithms that I've seen for smooth lines. So you can decide, I guess, if you think this is okay. So what does this all come down to? What are my key takeaways from this video? Well, I don't think smooth lines really distort the data as much as some people mm -hmm. uh, make it out to be. It'll probably be okay in most cases. And it's certainly fine, as we saw, for artistic or entertainment yeah, charts. Yeah, it, it doesn't set lines, on our case, on our case here. Probably best to avoid in other charts, though, because they do have some risks, even though they're not they're not uh, they're not significant risks. And more uh, complex smoothing algorithms may alleviate the overshooting problem, but they're also maybe not as visually appealing. That's so true. I'm not sure that those kind of solve the uh, the issue either. So I hope you found this. Guys, short video. To this is an amazing, sh amazing channel. I'm gonna subscribe to it. Practical reporting, like it's a really nice channel talking about data viz and stuff. Like you, we're not like uh, talking about click sense only. It's like data viz stuff. So very interesting. I did not know this guy before. But really great content, like his content creation and, and communication are really great. And I really enjoyed this video. Let me give him a like. Great video. Always leave a comment, guys. A, a comment helps on the, on the content creator, you know, he... He gets really happy when you comment on his video, you know. And let's see. Ah <laughs> man, man, Jesus Adil. I'm not gonna read your comment, man. You we, we have some great Indian content creators, man. Don't say this. Uh, well we have here some stuff about agile it's a it's a long video i'm not gonna watch it now and uh, creating a hunk chart using a line chart it's a, a video of click let's get oh the we have the subway map here <laughs> It's sales per category. Okay. Let's get started. From the asset panel, click on chart. Oh, the the audio is only in in 
on my left, maybe my my microphone, my phone is, is bad. I don't know. Let's see. Drag and drop. Album. No, the audio is only coming from one channel. I don't know if you guys can can hear it. You know, it's only coming coming from my my left side. Yeah, this video is had some problems on the recording. Line chart onto the sheet. Add the first dimension. In this case, select year. Let's so on. speed this up. Done, click rank. Uh, what was the expression? Minus rank son of sales. When done, click in the same way for positive and negative numbers. Unction. Enable the then remove the scroll bar is and mm. category name sys rank to enhance chart readability. You have now successfully created a rank chart using mm. the line chart. So he created a rank here using negative values, you know. So this is really interesting. I I did not thought about this before. Okay, guys. And we have some other knowledge nuggets here, but I'm tired. I woke up really earlier today. My my day was was really really rushed. So maybe I can finish this in a, in another live. So I'm gonna finish it for now here. And guys, remember to check this Notion file here. And thanks a lot for our friend Jen Hendrick for making this. And thank you guys for coming to the live stream. We have now five people here online simultaneously. Let me take a, a picture here. This is gonna be on, on LinkedIn. You know, I like Indian solutions, they have a lot of contents. Yes, man. Like especially on Click, we have some, uh, some, some uh, uh, guys from India who make really great content. You know, uh, I, let me get his channel, and he helped me a lot on on some stuff. Let me get here. Click. Tutorials. I forgot his name, man. Uh oh, this is the guy. This channel here, you, you have some really good tutorials about Click. He also makes some videos about Tableau and some other BI tools, you know. And it's re uh, very interesting, guys. This this YouTube channel here. I'm gonna send you, send you guys here. Mateus Melo, hey man, how are you doing? Leave it available to review, of course. Well guys, I think that's it for today. I'm gonna rest because I'm really tired. And thanks a lot for, for you guys here. Uh, Adilio, Mateus, my friend Rodolfo too. My teacher Thaisa for, for commenting here. Uh, thanks a lot for being here guys. Uh, and I think I will see you guys on the next live stream or video. Zaparoli, out!